Here's a five minute spiel on chondroblastoma of the bone. It's right there, it's in the epiphysis. There's the lesion on an MRI. Notice it's very well circumscribed and it's surrounded by intense edema. All this white stuff is edema. Here's a gross image. It's again in the epiphysis and it's very well circumscribed. But what you're here for, what you're here to listen to is how do I make a diagnosis of a chondroblastoma? And the simple answer is chondroblastomas have a very characteristic cellular phenotype. You recognize that phenotype and you'll almost never go wrong. When you look at these tumors under very low power, you'll see these sheets of somewhat epithelioid looking cells. Here they are, these epithelioid looking cells. Take a very close look at them because they have a very characteristic phenotype. Down here, there's a bit of calcification. This is the so-called chicken wire calcification. You may see it, you may not see it. But if you do, you're lucky. If you don't, the cells will give you the answer. And if you're really lucky and you've said your prayers at night, you will see classic chicken wire calcification, calcification that surrounds the individual neoplastic cells. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about chondroblastoma, the cell. So they have an abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, dense eosinophilic cytoplasm, distinct cytoplasmic membranes, but it's the nuclei that to my eye are the most characteristic. They are oval, they're very vesicular. You do not see nucleoli, but you see these very prominent grooves. They often remind me of Langerhans cells. That is what you need to make a diagnosis of a chondroblastoma, those cells. But there's all kinds of variations on that theme. Some tumors like this could be very heavily calcified. Here's that very calcified tumor on higher power. But this also shows the other feature that you may see with a chondroblastoma, and that is this eosinophilic chondroid like matrix. And within that matrix, you may see the cells spindling out a bit like this, but if you look hard enough, you will find those classic cells of a chondroblastoma. Here's another example of these rounded fragments of tissue with this eosinophilic chondroid type matrix. Now notice there's a couple of giant cells, osteoclast type giant cells around as well. Another look at that eosinophilic chondroid matrix and osteoclast type giant cell. The osteoclast type giant cells are simply along for the right. They are not the neoplastic constituent. The mononuclear cells are the neoplastic cells. If you're not sure, there is immunohistochemistry that you could use. These tumors are almost uniformly positive for these two proteins. If you don't have them in your lab, no problem, because those cells are very characteristic of a chondroblastoma. There are other markers that are positive as well. The one pitfall to remember is cytokeratin. So do not mistake this for a metastatic carcinoma. The age, of course, should help you. Remember, chondroblastoma affects patients in their second and third decade of life.